Today I have the privilege of speaking with Anthony Marchese from Texas Mineral Resources. How are you today, Anthony? Good morning, Tracy. Nice being here. The reason we're speaking to you and thank you for your time is specifically the U.S. trade, the U.S.-China trade agreement, and their surprise announcement. At least for people like myself, it was a surprise that we're now in the U.S.A. going to be exporting scandium and yttrium to China, and none of us know where it's going to come from, and everybody says, call Anthony. So, Anthony, tell us what's happening. Well, well, actually, it's more than just yttrium and scandium, because the way that if you, if you look at the specifics of the, um, of the trade agreement, it actually is all of the rare earth. The, the way they listed it, it's all of the rare earths, including scandium and yttrium, because a lot of people don't consider, especially yttrium, a rare earth. So it's actually all of the rare earths and scandium and yttrium and any of the alloys. So it's a combination of things. Uh, true, the United States currently has zero manufacturing capacity. There is some scandium reclamation that takes place out in the West. They, they send the concentrate out to Korea, uh, but by and large, none of the rare earths. Uh, I look at this as another potential market for our products when we get into production. Um, obviously, over the next two years, I don't see anybody getting to, into production. But remember, this is phase one. There's going to be phase two and hopefully phase three. So I look at this in, in several ways. Number one, um, it's real. Um, they are committed to buying it. Once we get into production, I sincerely doubt, once we get into production, rather, I sincerely doubt that we will be able to sell 100% of our goods into the American market so that... I think China then becomes a secondary market for some of our products. So I think it's a great thing. I think it acknowledges. The other thing it does is I think that it, it gives acknowledgement to the fact that we have a potential supply chain, um, I guess, resurgence because we gave it away 30 years ago. Uh, so we have a, a potential supply chain resurgence in the United States that the administration finally recognizes and more importantly, um, does something about it. By the way, I don't think this trade deal, uh, at least to us, it wasn't a surprise because we were in the office. We went to visit the office of trade representative uh, back in the early fall. So I, I have a feeling that our um, visit uh, paid off somewhat. Okay, and then I would also, uh, is this not confirmation to some of our experts that we've interviewed over the last decade have told us that actually China needs more rare earths? And part of the reason why they don't want to be controlling the world's supply of rare earths is because they actually are looking at a future shortage with the increasing demand for electric vehicles, for instance. Is that correct? Is that assumption correct? Absolutely. As it stands now, China imports um, material from North Korea. Uh, I mean, not officially, but everybody knows that they uh, import uh, concentrate from North Korea. They're active in Africa. Uh, they're active in uh, Asia. They're af active in Australia. So it's not a surprise that the United States would offer to sell them material. But again, our priority is to service the United States, especially the Department of Defense and its contractors who frankly have been very good to us and, and I think have led the charge in the United States in terms of establishing a uh, supply chain in the rare earth and critical material sector. Well, while we're speaking today, I'd like to also just touch on the National Defense Authorization Act that was recently announced. And of course, with the race for sustainability occurring too, uh, you know, U.S., excuse me, you know what, 8 o'clock may be too early for me. I've been using Peter Causey a lot lately, and I'm sure the editor is going to be laughing at this because, you know, Peter's just like a dynamo. Okay, here we go. 
Three, two, one. We've been watching as well with the recent announcement with the National Defense Authorization Act, the drive towards sustainability mandates. And of course, you have actual rare earth project, a rare earth project in Texas, no less. And we're hearing how the Australians are part of the race. And of course, the Canadians were part of the race to, to help achieve these goals. Can you talk to us about perhaps the advantage that uh, you have being located in Texas? Well, so a couple of things. One, we have a funding and development partner in uh, USA Rare Earth. It is a, an Australian uh, company. I think the Australians have been at the forefront, frankly, of the rare earth um, uh, market. Uh, you have obviously Linus, who is in production now. You have several other projects in Australia that are coming into production. Uh, so it was natural that the Australians would look to fund uh, and become our development funding and development partner in the United States. Once they uh, complete their uh, funding and development requirements under our agreement, they will then become joint venture uh, partners. Being in Texas has several advantages. Number one, our project is located on state property, not federal property. So we are under the auspices of the state of Texas when it comes to licensing. And that's a huge, um, a huge advantage. Um, also being in Texas, we're, uh, uh, we're literally right off an interstate highway. We are literally next to a railroad. So we have optimal infrastructure to move our uh, material to other parts of the country. Um, we also, if you look at our PEA, only about a third of our uh, output will be rare earth. The other, uh, there are, another third will be things what we call critical material like scandium and lithium. And the final uh, 20% or so will be in industrial minerals, which can be uh, sold in tanker cars and, and into the various agricultural markets throughout the Southwest United States. Again, we have optimal infrastructure. We've been blessed. It's all above ground mining. Uh, we're not, um, you know, the unfortunate part and the fortunate part is that we're in, if not the uh, the poorest county in Texas, it's the second poorest county. So we're able to offer incredible amounts of uh, jobs, high paying jobs, because the mining industry does pay well. And we're not located near any type of uh, in you know Native American burial grounds. As a matter of fact, uh, we have as a strategic partner a 20% owner in the uh, Navajo uh, Nation uh, through the Navajo Transitional Energy Corp. Uh, they look at they looked at an investment in us as uh, believe it or not a green energy play because their constituents, the Native American uh, uh, tribes, want green energy sustainability, and they told us they made the investment in record time because what we will be producing is required for the Green New Deal or whatever other deal <laughs> you want to call it in terms of green energy. Well, it's clear we need to have a follow-up interview on a number of items, including how to build a U.S. supply chain in the United States and the associated, the real timeline. So, Anthony, it's a pleasure speaking with you. I hope My you pleasure. have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you. Take care, Tracy.